So, tendon injuries, tendinopathies, tendon ruptures, things that we see all the time in physiotherapy. But what are the risk factors for someone establishing a tendon injury in the first place? Let's find out. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So when I was a student way back when, I really didn't appreciate the importance of my patient's past medical history and what that might mean for their tendons, whether they were a smoker or not, whether they were obese or not, how many steroid injections they've had in the past. Well, now I do have a much bigger appreciation of those things. And that's what I want to share with you today. Some really, really interesting stuff. So risk factor number one, age. Let's talk about tendons for a second. They're made up of collagen fibers and we can find collagen all over our body. Now with tendons, those collagen fibers are really nicely organized. And organized is a word that you'll hear all the time. It's a little bit like a packet of uncooked spaghetti. You can imagine that packet with all the spaghetti in a nice straight line all bundled together, making a really rigid structure. Now, as we get older, if we have an injury to our tendons, the collagen fibers aren't so organized when they rebuild. Not only that, we have less tenocytes in our body. These are really important cells at strengthening, maintaining and building tendons as we get older. And it's said that even from the age of 35 onwards, we become slightly more at risk of tendon injuries because of this. What do we find in practice? Well, a really common theme that I've seen, particularly with things like Achilles tendon ruptures, is when a patient has got slightly older, they haven't played football for a while, and their friends suddenly invite them back for a game. They haven't done any strengthening, they haven't done much activity for a long period of time, but yeah, I used to play football a lot, I'll be okay. And that's when they turn, and that's when they rupture their Achilles. The age has got a little bit higher, and they haven't maintained their strength through that period of time. The tendon is more vulnerable, they have an Achilles rupture. So age is definitely one thing to think about. We also think about this with the vastly older individual, those who are in the more elderly category. You are much more at risk of a tendon rupture in the rotator cuff at an older age than you are when you're much younger. In fact, when we do have younger patients, we expect slightly different injuries. Less common is a rotator cuff tear. Perhaps more common is something like a slap lesion. And as our patients get older, we tend to find that because the tendons are a little bit more degenerate, the rate of rotator cuff tendon rupture increases. So age is certainly something to think about. Risk factor number two to mention is smoking. Now here's a really interesting piece of information from Safran and Graham who investigated this with regards to distal biceps tendon ruptures in the elbow. And they found that if you were a smoker, you were up to seven and a half times more likely to sustain a distal biceps tendon rupture than if you didn't smoke. Now, naturally, this depends on how many a patient smokes and how long they've smoked for. But the connection is that for smokers, the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to that tendon is compromised. And therefore, as a result, it has a direct effect on healing. This is the same for other conditions such as a fracture. So considering whether or not your patient's a smoker and asking how long they smoked for and how many they smoked is really important because it can increase their risk of developing a tendon injury. Risk factor number three to talk about is the previous use of anabolic steroids. Now, this is a really interesting one. Here's a piece of research from Lassiter and Russell, link in the description below, talking about anabolic steroids and the effect this can have on tendons. Now, they talk about the fact that anabolic steroids can lead to tendon dysplasia. That's a fancy way of saying abnormal cell development within the tendons. And it means that those collagen fibers, which we spoke about earlier, aren't quite as strong and don't develop in the same way. So what does that mean in practice? Well, I've seen plenty of patients in the past, whether it might be a pectoralis tendon tear, whether it might be an Achilles tendon tear, even a patella tendon full rupture. And a lot of them in the past have had history of using anabolic steroids. And they kind of say, well, I've been to the gym for ages. I've, I've you know, I've always been in gyms. And you start to ask, oh, just a question if you don't mind, 
have you ever used anabolic steroids in the past? And they may think, well, what's that got to do with anything? I'm still really strong, without necessarily knowing that it can be a risk factor. So when your patient does have a significant tendon tear or a significant tendon rupture and you look at them and you think, you're really, really strong, just think about whether or not that might be a reason that their tendons have been impacted. Now, the next risk factor to mention is obesity. Now, here's a piece of research from Maki et al. 2020 talking about the increased risk of upper limb tendon tears amongst those who are obese. But hang on a minute, that's for the upper limb. We normally associate the idea that if you are more obese, it will affect the lower limb tendons because you're carrying more load. So why is it a risk factor for the upper limb too? Well, yes, that idea of having to carry more load of your body is certainly a factor. But the other is that we find that in patients who are obese, they tend to have a higher level of inflammatory cells around the body. And what this leads to or can lead to is a low grade level of chronic or persistent inflammation in various areas around the body. And naturally that can affect tendons too. We also find this with things like osteoarthritis, where that low grade level of inflammation can affect different joints in the body, not just tendons. So therefore, it's always a consideration and it's always something that I find myself talking about with patients to see if we can help them lose weight if they want to, it could have a beneficial effect on other parts of their body too. What's next? Medications. And to start with in particular, a particular form of antibiotic called fluoroquinolones. Now, this is a particular type of antibiotic which has been researched to have more side effects for tendon problems. Now, here's a piece of research from Morales et al. And I'm just going to read you what they found in their paper. They highlighted that the mechanism for fluoroquinolone induced tendon rupture remains uncertain, but has been linked to changes in collagen fibrils following alterations in the regulation of matrix metalloproteinases. Or in other words, that fluoroquinolones can change the cell structure, which then can lead to tendon ruptures. And we have seen this in the past, where patients have talked about having an infection and they're using certain antibiotics as a result, and they have a tendon rupture either at the time of taking those antibiotics or a period of time afterwards. So it's definitely something to look out for. If your patient is taking antibiotics, just ask what it is and check whether that's a fluoroquinolone. It might be something important to know. So the other medication I was going to mention is corticosteroid injections. Now, these are frequently used for different tendon problems. Should they be used for tendon problems? That's a bigger debate. That's one that I will cover in another video, I'm sure. But for now, I want to give you a piece of research by Chin Yu et al, as they found that when it comes to rotator cuff tendons, you are 7.44 times more likely to sustain a rotator cuff tear if you've had a steroid injection compared to if you haven't. So what does that mean for practice? Well, commonly orthopedic surgeons might be the individuals who are talking to patients about steroid injections and they might say, well, yeah, we can try one or two. But if a patient has had limited success and the patient's asking for a third one, a fourth one or a fifth one, you might find that the consultant starts to say, no, I don't think that's a good idea because the more steroid injections you have, the worse the impact is on the tendon quality. And this can be a factor for the future. If your patient has had multiple rotator cuff corticosteroid injections, for example, and they need to have a rotator cuff repair in the future, the quality of that tendon can be impacted by the steroids that's been used. So another thing to look out for. So ultimately there are loads of risk factors, but I hope that this has been able to cover some of the key ones for you. And if it's helped, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribing to our channel, and of course, check out our resources on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.